What's up guys? I am going to look at the AUR today. So I just recently downloaded some packages from the AUR because, uh, well, I wanted to have my favorite code IDEs. I didn't want to rely solely on Vim for all my development. I like some things about like VS Code and RStudio for some of my other coding type work. And plus they also have a Vim mode, so it's not all bad. But what's the AUR? So the AUR is the Arch Linux user repository, which hosts a lot of user hosted packages. So a lot of programs and applications, things that have been configured to work with Arch that are maintained by the users and it's not in the uh, official repository, I guess. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but all the packages that are here are hosted by users. And there are, um, my face is covering the stats. There are no, 55 and a half thousand packages. Um, these are user hosted packages, which means that as I say here, they are to be used at your own risk, which means that when you download the Git repos with all the files in it, you need to make sure you read everything or glance over it and make sure there's nothing malicious in it. But um, usually they're probably gonna get caught real quick for anything malicious, but anywho. So that's the AUR, and I just recently did my first few programs in this. So I figured out how to download the applications and get them working. Um, I'll show you what I did with some scripts to make things work, but I downloaded my packages, um, and I'm gonna do one from scratch, so hopefully this works and doesn't blow up on me live. But I did RStudio and VS Code, um, but yeah. So here's what a package on the AUR looks like. You have this page. I'm looking at like Slack desktop. I'm not gonna use the desktop application, the GUI application. I'm actually gonna try and use Slack term for a terminal application of Slack uh, because I actually have a group, a uh, free code camp code group I can go to for meetups and we all talk on Slack. So I wanna continue using that even if it is proprietary, so what? Um, but here's the page. So what you do to get a package from the AUR on your machine working and have programs and things. So you go to this uh, page or a page on the AUR, you find this link, the git link. Copy that. And then we go to our terminal to make, excuse me, a directory. So I already have a directory for programs from the AUR that have to be, um, I think it's manually compiled. I think that's what the terminology is. But um, you can see I have a file folder here called programs. So I'm gonna go to programs. And in there I have like RStudio and VS Code. So we're gonna make um, a clone of that repo link that I copied. So we're just going to do git clone, shift insert and paste that URL in there. And we're gonna clone this uh, git repo with all the files in it. So while it's doing that and it's done, all right, so now we have the repo installed. So if I do ls, we can see it's Slack desktop, it's in there. Um, so what we do next is we make the package. We do make package with the si options. Um, i installs the package. Um, we're not using pacman because it's from the AUR, but we install the package and then we do s for syncing all the dependencies. So if there's anything it needs, it downloads those as well. So this is the install and make process. After this, I'll show you the um, uninstall process and hopefully that doesn't blow up on me. So we're gonna do make package dash si. Um, I think you have to shift a cd into the directory. Oops. Select desktop and then make, all right, because, um, yeah, because it's just the package build file, which actually, if we're following the best practice, I would then open that up and I would actually uh, review this and I would look at all these things and make sure that none of the links go to any malicious sources um, and nothing looks sketchy, which, you know, at first glance, I don't really know how half this stuff is anymore. <laughs> so uh, I'm just gonna say that this is probably good and my computer probably won't blow up. I have backups anyways. Check out my rsync video for that. Um, but now we're in the directory for the, the git repo. LSL A, so you can see we got the git stuff in there. But we have the git repo, 
and where you have the package um, package build file. So now we're just going to do make package with the sync and install options, and it will work. I have to enter my password for this. Yes, I want to install these things. And so it showed me the lib curl dependency. So now it's also going to install that to make sure that all of this stuff works. So this actually might take a little bit. And we'll come back when this is over. So the package finished installing. Um, weirdly enough, it did ask me to install it with Pac-Man. Uh, and everything. I'm not sure why. Ignore that and pretend it like it didn't happen uh, because it doesn't change anything else in the workflow. So what we did, we downloaded the git repo with the link into a directory and I have a programs directory for AUR programs. I put the git repo in there, I entered the repository with CD, and then I did the command make package with the SNI options for sync dependencies and install. So once this is done, once this is done, the package is made. All the files are sent out, I guess. Like I'm just... All I need to do now is type the name of the binary script, the script that opens up the program. So in this case, that would be uh, Slack. And it should open Slack. Um, I already tested this a couple, there we go. So there, there's the application. That's what we need to know. Now, what if you have an application with a very long name or something you just don't, um, it's just not a script that's in, a, in an area that is easily findable. So one thing I did is I actually wrote my own scripts to call my uh, applications. So um, you can see right now that in this terminal, um, it, the script to call the application might already exist. Like when I installed RStudio in VS Code, um, when I did the make package, it might have already made a binary script that would actually you know, call the application, open it like it did right here with Slack. Uh, but then you can see the terminal is still currently thinking. Um, it's an active terminal. This program is bound to this terminal. I wanted to completely detach the application from the terminal um, and make it so that the terminal can do other things now. Like it's not bound to this. I um, disowned the application from the terminal. But I also wanted the terminal to just close because I don't want to have to then click any more keys and uh, close a terminal after uh, typing in the name of the script, the application, um, and then have it open and then have the terminal here. I wanted to have just, just type in the, the name of the application, close terminal, open application which is what I did. So if you can see, I'm gonna close that, and it, you know, I closed the terminal, but it closed the application because they're still bound. There's, there, I had to not disown it. So what I did, if you can see right here, RStudio. So this is the name of the script I wrote, just the name of the application, RStudio, because I know I'm not gonna forget that. Ah, terminal closed, application opens. It's a, dis it's a disowned process, so the terminal opens it, disowns from the terminal, and closes the terminal. How did I do that? I wrote scripts for this and VS Code to do that. Um, let's see, CD, or actually just Vim, and then RStudio. There, super simple. I call the name of the binary. So actually this is what I did not want to have to type dash bin for this binary to run. I mean sure I could have renamed it, but you know just gonna deal with the package and the way it was it was made. So I didn't want to actually have to type out rstudio dash bin so I just want to do rstudio. Um, the ampersand actually ends the process so that way the terminal can do other things. So the terminal's still open but it's not you know, solely focused on the application it opened. It, I can, you know, CD into another directory, type stuff, whatever. But I also wanted the terminal to close. So what this little piece here, this is a shameless copy pasta from Stack Overflow, is that this will get the parent ID of, yeah, something to do with parent IDs and process, parent process something ID. Um, and it uses awk to get some fourth value, whatever. What I know is that it works. 
I mean, generally I have an idea of what it's doing. It's not like, you know, delete system D or delete window, Windows 32 or whatever, system 32. Um, but yes, this closes the parent process, which is the terminal, and therefore it opens my application and closes the terminal, which is exactly what I wanted. So I can close this. I can say VS Code, because I just have a copy pasta of that for just for VS Code, and it will open VS Code. This is exactly what I wanted. So now I have a template to do this for all my applications. Now, I don't want Slack on here. Uh, I can close that. Oops. I don't want Slack on this computer. Um, I wanted Slack term because I want the terminal application, not the actual GUI application. So I want to uninstall Slack and all its associated files in one go. Um, supposedly, we're going to see if this works live. Pacman dash capital R for remove, um, N and S for recursive and no save are supposed to be the options to completely just remove something completely from your system. So let's check this out. Slack desktop. Pacman, probably to run this as sudo, we'll see. Um, R and S slack dash desktop. Yep, sudo, so sudo, and my password, there we go. So remember earlier, it actually had to dis install this dependency, and here's the actual program that is the file size, because it did maybe download it through Pac-Man, but this is exactly what it should do. So let's see, remove it all, excellent. So let's go, I wanna see, to programs, select, desktop is still in there, but let's see what's actually in there. Oh, so it's still in there. So it did not completely remove it. Maybe it removed it from the system. Oh, that's right. I remember reading that the actual files in the um, directory you have here, you have to manually remove. So that's fine. Just remove the directory recursive, the directive, the directory recursively. Just remove that and we're all good. So if I call Slack though, it should not appear because it should have removed the binary. Yes. All right, so then I can just get out of here, remove recursively. Um, oh, yeah, 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 that should work. Uh, slack desktop. Do it anyways. Oh, sudo. Yay. There we go. All done. So that was how to completely install and uninstall a AUR package. Um, I did my own little binding of the R scripts to the applications because I wanted things my way, and um, that's how I like it, but that's it. There you go. See you next time.